I am making this video to talk about metaphysics of relationship and how does it work. I have borrowed some concepts from Buddhism to talk about this topic. So these are all my interpretation and in a free world you are free to differ with anything you want. I would use five points to talk about uh, the whole idea of how this would work. The first would be karmic entanglement. The second would be the nature of soul which is genderless. The third would be the importance of desire. The fourth would be the currency of karma. And the fifth would be uh, about meditation and all of the answers lies in meditation due to the idea of free will. So the first topic uh, is karmic entanglement which says that whatever happened in the past during various incarnation would bind different souls together. So if you message somebody, if you message me or if you are planned to be linked to me then it's not just because of a random uh, motion like a gas particle, but it's something which relates you and me from some time in the past. Uh, when I extrapolate this idea to my second point, which is that soul is genderless, it means that when we get linked to a soul uh, beyond the idea of the gender, whether it be a father or a son or a mother or a daughter, or a daughter or a father then if we get attached to a soul then we are bound to uh, get back close to that soul while uh, how that happens is again based on different factors which would be my next slide so the idea that soul is genderless uh, is quite prominent and the people whom you meet is uh, decided based on how uh, on your affinity towards uh, different people in your various past incarnations. Now there is a very clear mandate that when God made this world and he decided on two concepts, one was the free will and the other which is less talked about is desires to matter. So God promised us that whatever we desire, we'll get it if we don't break the rule or if we don't create any anomaly in the system. If we get connected to a soul and we keep wanting that soul, uh, we are going to get bound to close to it sooner or later. And that's why Buddha talks about detachment as the primary cause of liberation. Because till the time you are attached to anything in any manner, no matter it be good or it be bad, no matter it be to your parents or to your children or to your wife, that attachment would not let you liberate because that attachment would get you back to that soul sooner or later. So if I have some kids in the future, they might be my possible parents who are attached to me and their attachment is so high the last time when they die that the soul keeps attached uh, to the next, uh, to the same soul and it, uh, it comes up later. So desires do matter. Now, when everything happens, what is the currency of transaction? So there are two types of currency that, uh, that are defined. First is the good acts. If you help somebody, you get a positive karma. You can uncash that karma. And the second is uh, the currency of mantras, that uh, if you recite a mantra many times, that uh, you get a power to do few things. If you recite mantras, you get a power to deflect your bad karma, which is bound to hurt you and you get a power to deflect the attachment or go towards detachment so that that's the currency of mantra that you can use to do two things the currency of good acts let you uh and cash your good acts in some way in the future which uh, which will make good things happen to you maybe you'll meet good people maybe luck would take your side so where are the answers of all these things now, since, the God cre since God created this world in a manner where everybody has free will, I cannot change your default trajectory. 
because it's already defined by your old karma so unless you meditate you won't get beyond the default trajectory that you are moving and nobody can change it because it's it's free will i hope you liked my video thank you for listening